That joke isn't funny anymore. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 That 70s Show moments that wouldn't fly today. Gray is why prisoners are unhappy. Really, I always thought it was the loss of freedom. <laughs> and the uninvited man love. For this list, we'll be looking at satirical moments and gags from throughout the show's run that have not aged well, to say the least, and would definitely never make it past the censors today. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Eric Gets Attacked at a Feminist Rally Second wave feminists in the 1970s introduced the now well-established Take Back the Night rallies in response to violence against women. This is important. Women should be able to walk through the park at night without being harassed by weirdo men. Hey, that was one time. <laughs> I'll go. Really? While it's great to see the show include this momentous movement, their portrayal of feminism relies on outdated tropes such as all feminists are angry, violent man-haters. Hey, there's a woman in trouble! Let's get him, sisters! <laughs> what? No! No! That's right, you pervert. No means no. When the women attack Eric due to a misunderstanding, the so-called joke plays on the misconception that feminists have an angry mob mentality and are set out to destroy innocent men. Sadly, even now the Me Too movement has elicited similar responses from its critics, showing just how far we still have to go. They stole all my clothes. Who? Oh. The angry mob of feminists. Oh man, look at you. They even shaved off all your body hair. <laughs> yes. Yes, they did. Number 9. Donna Gets Fired Jealousy rears its ugly head when the radio station hires a musically ignorant intern nicknamed Sizzling Sarah. No, sillies. There's way too much work to do at the station to daydream. I mean, I have to take my top off and sort records, and then Zana and I have to French kiss. It's exhausting. When Donna refuses to pose in a bikini to promote an event, Sarah steps up, and Donna is fired on the spot. In today's social climate, this story would have been treated much more seriously. Sarah, you knew that I would never do this. You were just trying to make me look bad. And it's working. <laughs> You're fired. Not only is it a totally illegal request to make of an employee, but it's also an abuse of power that we're finally seeing get its comeuppance these days. With a little inspiration from Eric, Donna wins her job back and teaches her boss a lesson he will never forget. So here's George Carlin with the seven dirty words you can't say on television or radio. <laughs> huh. it seems like I almost shouldn't play it. Oh well. Eric, thank you so much. That was a great idea. Number 8. All the Shaming Considering the 1970s was the era of the sexual revolution, you would think that the show would reflect the contemporary issues of the time. The goddess is Eric's sister. She's not a goddess, she's more the Earth Mother whore type, which works for me. <laughs> Instead, sex and sexuality are often demonized for laughs, normally with a female character as the target of the joke and that usually being Eric's sister, Lori. All I'm saying is daddy works really hard and nothing here is cheap. Except you. <laughs> <laughs> Although allowing women to explore their sexuality in the same way as men do is often still taboo in popular culture, slut shaming at least has become a huge no-no. However, we imagine that if any of the guys were getting as much action as Lori, they'd be celebrated rather than condemned. Talk about a double standard. Number seven. Eric Crossdresses. If you thought an episode called Battle of the Sexists would be enlightening, you'd be bitterly disappointed. I gotta go inside, but I'll leave the light on. I don't want you to gloat in the dark. <laughs> well, hey, Eric, do I want your balls back? Okay, now look, that's... Eric feels emasculated when he keeps losing at sports to Donna, and even a very reasonable pep talk from his mom doesn't help. In a scene that painfully reinforces gender stereotypes, Eric imagines himself in a dress complete with makeup and jewelry. Well, that's game. That's <laughs> yes. great. Worse still, when he finally concedes that he's fine with Donna winning, he grows a pair of breasts. Not only does this imply that women are the inferior sex, but in an age when we're embracing the complexity of gender, a plot like this would never fly. Oh, okay, okay, Mr. Smartmouth. 
But when you get older, you are going to realize that it's pretty silly to get upset about losing a game to your girlfriend. Number six, Fez gives Kelso horrific breakup advice. The portrayal of Fez as the uncivilized foreigner is so problematic, but more on that later. In this episode, Kelso wants to break up with Angie, and Fez's advice raises some serious alarm bells. Well, why don't you try to figure out how to do it kindly, maturely, respectfully? Yeah. Sounds nice. Hmm. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna sleep with her best friend. He essentially suggests sexual assault by saying that Kelso should make love to her in a dark room so that he can come in and finish the job. You will make love to her in a dark room. Halfway through, you will excuse yourself. Then I'll come in, pretend to be you and finish the job. <laughs> Sexual assault would never, ever be used as such a flippant punchline today, and it would certainly never be given the casual reaction that Kelso follows up with. Sadly, this isn't the only incident where sexual assault is played for laughs. Kelso feels that you two should have one last night together. And he wants it to be special. So it will take place in this dark room. And uh, for a minute, you may think, hey, this is not Kelso. <laughs> but that's just the Laker talking. Number five, the foreman's meet Hyde's biological father. We guess it seems at least plausible that a white middle-class family living in Wisconsin in that era could have lacked interactions with any African-Americans. Hi, is this the foreman's? You know, I'm sorry. I told your friend last week we don't want a subscription to Ebony Magazine. <laughs> However, these days, watching the foreman's meet Hyde's biological father is quite painful. Once everyone gets past the initial shock of discovering that he is black, the insensitive comments and stereotypes begin. Nowadays, the media is being challenged for its representation of minorities, so we imagine this story would have been handled very differently. We understand that, as with so many of this list's moments, it's all supposedly in-jokes or satire, but these tone-deaf punchlines don't quite fit the bill. Perhaps a cool drink for our cool visitor? <laughs> <laughs> no thanks, but I think all of you could use a scotch. Number four, toxic masculinity. Though this notion that there's one right way to be a man is only recently starting to fade from canon, so much of popular culture is still inundated with these outdated gender norms. Yeah, but is that a big deal? Of course not. Listana happens to be, you know, a girl. <laughs> Take Eric. He's bad at sports, in touch with his emotions, and doesn't really look or act like a man allegedly should which opens him up to ridicule. Brad, why do you have to be so hard on him? Same reason my old man was hard on me. To prepare me for the world. Whether it's Red calling him a sissy or the gang, Donna included, riding him for having a strong girlfriend, can you blame Eric for being confused about gender? And the idea that all men must conform to one mold of masculinity is actually incredibly harmful. Wait, those skate freaks that hang out down by the basketball court? Every time we want to shoot hoops, we gotta scare them off with bottle rockets. <laughs> Kelso, they're not freaks, they're just like you and me, but on wheels. <laughs> Number three, Fez and Nina's relationship. Viewers today wouldn't bat an eyelid over an interracial couple, and it would be totally realistic to have a storyline where the parents object to the relationship. Oh, well, you can't be her boyfriend. Why not? Because you're, uh, what's the word, honey? Different? Okay, different. <laughs> However, the plot twist is hugely problematic as Nina reveals that she's only dating Fez to annoy her racist parents. And this in itself is incredibly racist and offensive. Fez, my parents are jerks and I wanna get back at them by doing it with you on their bed. Accept <laughs> that. Thanks, Kelsey. Sure, we would totally understand if Nina dated Fez despite her parents' objections, but the fact that she's using him just to rile them up is hugely unacceptable. We'd like to believe that today, this storyline would be dealt with more sensitively and with the respect it deserves. You know what, Nina? There's only one Fez, and that is a Fez we need. <laughs> and if you don't like that, then we shouldn't be together. Number two, Lori assaults Kelso. We're Ying Li, we come to another example where sexual assault is played for laughs. Listen, Lori, I, 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 uh, I don't think my girlfriend, Jackie, <laughs> would like you sitting on me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you like me sitting on you. In fact, I know you do. When Lori traps Kelso in his van, she completely disregards his objections and forces herself upon him. 
Even when he tells his friends that he feels violated and that she took advantage of him, the so-called comedy value of the moment trivializes the ordeal. I totally did it with her! <laughs> <laughs> what? Moreover, the show completely dismisses that men can also be victims of sexual assault, and Kelso's flippant reaction undermines the trauma that follows an experience like this. Due to movements like Time's Up, misconceptions about only women being victims of assault are being challenged, and we would never see it used as a punchline today. You say one more word about my sister, and I'm gonna tell Jackie. <laughs> right, right. You forgot you have this huge, bitchy anchor tied around your neck. I mean, it could happen. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Fez the xenophobic punchline. Sometimes it feels like the show casually uses the 70s era setting as an excuse to cover up their most racially and culturally insensitive moments. Oh, hello. Who the hell are you? I'm the new foreign exchange student. The football team asked me if I wanted to hang out. I sure don't have said yes. Fez's background is ambiguous, and his nickname, with a little creative license, actually stands for foreign exchange student. Fez is portrayed as the uncivilized foreigner yet to learn the ways of civilized Americans. Yeah, and then it actually got even more disturbing. <laughs> Get this creepy bastard off me! You'll find it hard to come by even one episode where Fez's accent, predatory sexual appetite, or general behavior isn't the butt of the joke. Considering the sensitivity currently surrounding immigration, there's no way that the barrage of jokes at the foreigner's expense would ever fly today. So, what if we ask the Dutch? Oh, uh, who can understand a word they say? <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.